Mario! What is up my friends? So as you can see by the title of this video, I was on Germany's next top model and if you know me then you know that things usually kind of get out of control so in this video I'm just gonna sit down with you and tell you the story of what really happened on Germany's next top model. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and definitely watch until the end and then we're gonna get started with the first question I always got which is Hey Mario, how in the world did you end up on Germany's Next Top Model? And some people thought I had to go to an actual modeling casting and show them my com cards and stuff but the reality is that nowadays almost everything happens on Instagram. So I saw the story of one of the casting producer, executive, chairman, CEO of Germany's Next Top Model and he said, hey guys, we're looking for a male model who speaks German and who's currently in Los Angeles. So I just reached out to him and I sent him a direct message saying, Hey, ich, ich kann Deutsch. Einigkeit und Recht auf Freiheit. Bitte nimm mich, bitte nimm mich. Brüderlich mit Herz und Hand. So then we actually met up in a restaurant in Los Angeles and he took a quick casting video of me that he then sent to Heidi Klum. And Heidi Klum saw the video was immediately like, hey Mario, you were so incredible on that video. You're really hot and we need you on the show. I don't know if she actually said that, but that's probably how the conversation went because a month later, I flew back to Los Angeles to shoot the episode. So they said it was gonna be a two day shooting and the first day I drive up to Bel Air. That's where the mansion was where the models are staying at. And guys, I've literally stayed in model apartments in New York, in Milan, all over the world. And it's literally, you stay in bunk beds. You know, there's like five guys sharing one bathroom, one kitchen, it's dirty as hell. And then I get to this place where the female models of Germany's Next Top Model are staying at, and it blows my freaking mind. You know, they have like their own little pool, probably like a 15 to 20 million dollar mansion in the bougiest area you could possibly imagine. So it was me and a couple of other models from Los Angeles, so we walk into the mansion and all the girls were gone. They literally didn't know that we were coming. We actually had to do a photo shoot with them later on, but we had to surprise them. So to surprise them, we all lined up on the stairs. Being shirtless, of course, gets more views. I totally understand. So then after a couple of hours of waiting, the big moment had arrived and all the girls walked in and they saw us on the stairs being shirtless, putting on our blue steel look. And what I really appreciate about the show is that nothing was still they didn't tell us how to react, what to do. They actually just captured their genuine first reaction. So after the girls were done with their, oh my God, this is so exciting. It was the beginning of what I can just call a dating show. I felt like I was on The Bachelor or Love Island or something because we had a picnic and we had to meet the girls one by one because the goal for us male models was to pick a girl that we were gonna shoot with on the next day. So it was literally Literally like two or three hours of speed dating. They had some carrot snacks, which was beautiful. We got to know all the girls and then it was time to actually pick a girl. And the girl that I picked in the end was a girl by the name of Tatiana. I gotta say Tatiana was the most confident out of all of them. I liked her personality, but Tatiana has a very interesting backstory because Tatiana actually was born as a man and she had a surgery and now identifies and is a woman. And First of all, I don't give a shit. I really don't care about like genders or sexualities or any of that because I think we should just not have labels and just see the human experience for what it is. But anyways, while I was talking to her, I could tell that she had a slightly deeper voice than usual. Also, her face was very, she had a very nice face structure, but it could almost look a little bit manly. But you know, that situation, nobody told me about her backstory. I didn't know any of the girls and I didn't want to sit her down and be like, hey, Tatiana, a uh, quick question. Um, have you have you ever had a pee? But again, I didn't care about Tatiana's sexuality. I could just tell that she had a very nice personality. She had confidence and that's important at a photo shoot. So I was excited to shoot with her the next day at the actual couple photo shoot. 
So then the big day of shooting had arrived and we were shooting up in Calabasas, which is like a freaking two hour drive from Los Angeles. But when I got there, I was blown away. Guys, I've done a lot of like TV commercial photo shoots, crazy big productions, right? But that one was like 50 people crew, probably even more. They had the craziest freaking catering you can possibly imagine. You know, they had like vegan, raw vegan bars, like everything, pancakes, you, and you anything you want, name it. And guys, if you've ever seen Germany's Next Top Model, you'll know that it's not gonna be a regular photo shoot. It's always gonna be a girl suspended in midair while having a snake around their neck, spiders on their ears, and sharks attacking them from below. So the concept for our photo shoot was getting the girls to cry while two gigantic fire trucks let it rain upon us while I'm wearing a regular velvet suit, you know, just the usual, and she's wearing a dress that looks like <laughs> a sponge. So before the big photo shoot with Heidi Klum happened, all the girls were kind of like rehearsing, trying to get into character, and all of a sudden, they are calling me and they were like, Mario, we need you to go to the van right now. Tatiana is crying. We need to get this on camera, right? So I, I walk into the van, I open up the door, and Tatiana is there literally in tears, like genuinely crying. Hey guys, in that situation, I usually know what to say in life, but when a girl cries, two things happen. First of all, I, I, I have the tendency to cry as well, and secondly, I genuinely am happy helpless. I don't know what to say. So I kind of tried to comfort her saying that like, huh, it's all good. You know, like if, if we're sad, it means that we have things in our life that matter to us. And I try to come up with some deep bullshit, but we were excited to shoot, but we still had to wait until some of the other girls were done. And then guys, it was crazy. You know, we just had to wait there. It was kind of nerve wracking. You know, you knew you had to go up there and it's your take. It's, it's, it's going to be the moment when you are on camera on German television, you know, millions of people watching it. And then all of a sudden, while I was giving an interview I could see the first girl Vanessa came back from the photo shoot and guys it was insane she was literally drenched in water everything was wet her mascara was running down her face she was crying she was sobbing she was probably cold and in that moment like five camera teams just run up to her and go like oh we need to get this from every single angle because obviously crying girls that's like gold that's like pure gold on Germany's next top model and I gotta say it was so genuine they didn't tell the girl to cry it literally just started crying I was like yo this is so cool I don't know how many times I cried on a photo shoot but I feel like now I have the permission when I go to a photo shoot for some underwear job I'm like oh oh the pants are so tight <laughs> the pants are so tight and you know it's gonna be so dramatic so then it was finally our time to go up there and shoot the picture with Heidi Klum so I walk up with her towards the rain and she's literally still crying so when we get there Heidi Klum looks really concerned and is asking asking her, hey, Tatjana, warum bist du so traurig? And then she looks at me and goes like, hey Mario, was glaubst du, was Tatjana so traurig gemacht hat? And I'm literally in the spotlight, and in my head I go like, she's probably sad because of her sexuality. She's probably sad because she used to be a man, and that obviously comes with a lot of problems. But before I wanted to say that, I remember that nobody ever told me. Because nobody had ever mentioned anything about her backstory. And just imagine me going up on German television and going like, hey, yeah, Heidi, I think it's because she used to have a pee. And guys, it was the most dramatic photo shoot I've ever done. Most photo shoots are just like this. Pose, pose. Mario, can you move your left arm closer to your chest? Ah, yeah, yeah, that's good. But this one was like rain on top of us. Freaking two reflectors, two from behind. She was wearing a sponge dress. I was in a velvet suit. I was dancing with her, you know, looking at her very intensely. I was lifting her up. We're doing like crazy shapes. I was twisting her around. And then at one point, everything just froze, you know? I felt the raindrops like slowly hitting the ground. I looked at her and I saw a sparkle in her eyes. And then all of a sudden I felt this, this heartwarming feeling that just came all over me. And all of a sudden there were like butterflies and sparkles and rainbows. And in that moment, it happened. <laughs> That's what they showed on television, but they left out the tiny detail that every once in a while Heidi Klum would give instructions. But it was alright, it was a nice kiss, and in the end, you know, they turned it into a crazy 
freaking love story, you know, because usually after the shoot, I literally walk off, I never see Tatiana again. But because the love story between me and Tatiana was so magical, I actually got to come back for a show that airs after Germany's Next Top Model, where I actually came and surprised her in a park on Valentine's Day with flowers and a little balloon that had a kiss emoji on it. And it was super nice, they asked a lot of questions about her love life because apparently she hasn't had a boyfriend since she transitioned to a woman. So in a way I'm really happy that I could be one of her first experiences and I know guys, I always get accused of doing so much gay baiting and queer baiting. I know a lot of my content is going in that direction and that is because this is literally my life. I show you what I go through and I just happen to have a lot of gay friends and these experiences just keep kind of like attracting me. I don't know, it's just happening, but I didn't want to make the video about that. That's why I didn't give the video a title like, I kissed a trans girl. I'm just happy I met Tatiana and I gotta say, Tatiana, if you're watching this, I really respect what you're doing because out of all the girls, you were like the most open, the most genuine and the most confident and you could be insecure about so many things having a past like this. I mean, I cannot say how much respect I have for that. So I'm sending you a lot of love and I'm definitely gonna keep watching Germany's Next Top Model. When my episode actually came out I had a public viewing with my family and my friends in Germany all right guys welcome to the first annual public viewing of Germany's next top model all my friends are here thanks for coming <laughs> and also let me know in the comments what you think about this let me also know if I should maybe meet up with Tatiana she's in Berlin or something right now so maybe we can meet up if you want to see a vlog like that with Tatiana maybe we can make something happen just let me know in the comments like this video subscribe you know the drill and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.